I hope you weren't expecting to see Raquel Welsh holding a, a giant lithium-ion uh, cell. Uh, if you were, I've disappointed you, but let me try and make amends. I'm going to show you in this uh, video how you can drive a microcontroller uh, for 2,000 years, keep it alive for 2,000 years on the energy from a single lithium-ion cell. Um, now, now, perhaps the engineers and chemists amongst you will say, well, hang on a minute, 2,000 years, the cell is going to be dust and the microcontroller's probably got a shelf life of 50 years. Well, yeah, I get that, but this is illustrative to show you, uh, you know, how, uh, if you uh, design your applications for your microcontroller carefully, you can squeeze an awful lot out of those batteries. Now, uh, in microcontroller design, there's generally two types of processing you do. One is uh, waiting for an event like a button to be pressed and light up a display or something. The other one is looping around a sequence of code with a delay in between, gathering information from sensors. And those are the two broadly uh, routines and process routines that go on in microcontrollers. So you're probably familiar with it, and you're probably saying, yeah, that's what I do. Um, well, if you're doing either of those, and you're doing it on a, 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 a mobile device with a battery, you, it's the chances are you, you may be doing it very inefficiently, you may be doing it wrong. Um, I'll take you through one of those uh, scenarios, that's the user interface where a button is pressed and the microcontroller does something um, and then we'll uh, show how that can be done uh, very efficiently using interrupt processing and we'll measure the current uh, consumption doing that and then we'll do the same again with how you would normally do it within the Arduino environment um, uh, traditionally without interrupts and see what the difference is. Now the motivation for this video didn't come from Arduino or, or anything of that. I bought a, a battery box um, at the beginning of summer and fitted it to my e-bike over there. It drives big LEDs at the front, nice and bright, but one of the advantages was it had a USB port on it to keep my mobile phone and my GPS stuff uh, charged up. Uh, so I fitted it to the bike at the end of summer. I hadn't used the bike's lights all summer. And I plugged the mobile phone in and the battery was dead. Uh, well, I thought that was a bit strange, so I, I took a closer look. I broke up one of them and got the PCB out and uh, to take a look for, at the buck converter, the one that takes the 8.4 volts this battery puts out and bashes them down to 5... Well, it doesn't actually bash them down, it chops them up into uh, 5 volts. Uh, and uh, the uh, PCB is on the screen right now. It's the XL1410 uh, from XL Semi, and so is the uh, PDF of the spec, and you can see that it drains 5 milliamps in quiescent current mode. Now I know it says between 3 and 5 milliamps, but always take the higher figure if it's a figure you don't want to be high, uh, in my experience. Um, so, um, you know, this is an indefense of batteries. I spend a lot of time with batteries, uh, writing battery management software, building batteries, and I get to hear it all the time, batteries are rubbish, my battery's dead, why can't I build a better battery? It, it, uh, it doesn't drive me nuts, but uh, sometimes, you know, the case for the defense of batteries is that it's bad design, such as this thing here. One a little isolation switch on the USB port, switch it on, switch it off, and so you're not draining the battery constantly. The other side of the case for the defense is that there's an awful lot of energy in this uh, 18650, and if you d uh, design your code, your microcode in your sketches carefully, correct selection of processors and uh, components, um, you can make it go an awful long way. How, how, how far can you make it? 2,000 years. So I'll get a camera around here and you can see how I uh, get 2,000 years worth of use out of this single lithium-ion 18657. Right, let me explain this uh, mess in front of me. Uh, I have here um, an 80 tiny 85 in a ZIF socket. Now just to remind you, the 80 tiny 85 has the same uh, uh, characteristics in sleep mode, electrical characteristics, as the processor in the Arduino Uno. So it is a, a, a like for like uh, comparison, certainly here in, in the sleep mode we're using. Uh, it's in a breadboard. I have uh, the breadboard powered by one of my uh, lithium ion battery contraptions. Uh, it goes into a converter, yes, a buck converter, probably wasting a ton of energy, at 3.3 volts. I've got a button here linked to one of the pins, it pulls it to ground. I've got another button up here, uh, which is connected, uh, sorry, another pin up here which is connected to an LED. And you can see the code I'm uh, going to be running uh, in front of you right now. Uh, it puts the processor into sleep mode, and uh, before it puts it into sleep mode, it gives it uh, a vector to wake up on a uh, pin change on interrupt zero. Uh, when it wakes up, uh, it uh, 
turns on the LED for one second and then turns it off and then goes back to sleep again. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power all of this stuff up and we're going to see just what the current drain is uh, from the uh, uh, power supply through the AT Tiny 85. Uh, this thing here will measure down to um, 100 pico amps, so we've got plenty to play with here. So I'm going to switch it on now, and there you see 100, 191, 192 nanoamps. Um, you got you got milli, you got micro, and then you got 10 to the minus 9 nanoamps. So we got 200, just under 200 nanoamps. That that is that is phenomenal that that processor is working at 200 nanoamps. And if you don't believe me, I should be able to press that button, and the damn thing will wake up and light the LED. And there you go, one second LED flash. Now to give that some perspective, and it'll be on the screen now, 200 nanoamps at 3.3 volts is 0 0.00000066 joules per second, or 21 joules per year. Now if you then take a look at a, a fully charged uh, lithium-ion 18650, this is the NCR 18650B, 3400 milliamps, now, that can supply 3.4 amps multiplied by 3.7 volts nominal times 3,600 seconds or 45,000 joules. So you divide 21 uh, joules per year into 45,000 and guess what you get? Yes, 2,150 years. It's quite extraordinary really. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that is, the process is not doing anything. It's just responding to a button press. But, you know, frankly, you know, if you take a hard look at your code, you'll find that you don't actually have to do anything all the time. It's only occasionally when you have to respond to an outside event or wake up after a certain period of time and do something. The rest of the time, you should be able to put that processor to sleep and save the energy in your battery. You know, and just as a, as a sort of like a, a funky exercise, what I'll do is I'll modify this code here uh, and I'll, I'll put a delay in just so you can see what a simple delay does to the energy consumption. So after we turn off the... Uh, uh, LED, I'll delay for um, five seconds so we can see what the power consumption is on the uh, on the meter. Right, I'll take this chip out and put it into the writer over here. And we'll upload that. So now what we're doing is we're, uh, we're going to sleep, we're waking up on a pin press, uh, we're flashing the LED, we're turning off, turning off the LED, and then we're waiting uh, for five seconds uh, with a delay, not a sleep mode. So we get a good comparison to see how much energy is consumed. So we're back in here, uh, meter on, power on, we go into amps. We should be around about the same sleep consumption, you know, about 180, 200. And now, as you can see, 4 milliamps. So that's an extraordinary amount of current. Back to my lousy um, 8.4 volt LED battery holder for the bike. Uh, it's draining continuously 4 to 5 milliamps uh, using the delay. So you should be able to use something uh, a little bit uh, less onerous on power, such as the watchdog timer. Not for this video, but maybe for the next video. Anyway, that's not a fair comparison because what we were doing is we were looking at the uh, response of uh, a button press and how much energy it used in sleep mode. Uh, what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is uh, a sketch which constantly pulls the button uh, to see if it's been pressed. And I've got on the screen right now that you can see um, a, a sketch which uh, does the same thing to the, to, to, to the button and the LED except instead of waiting for an interrupt on the button, it constantly scans by a digital read for the button to be pressed. So let me uh, upload that one. And that will be an apples to apples comparison. Remember 200 nanoamps or just under 180, 190 uh, while we were in sleep mode and now instead of putting it into sleep mode and waiting for an interrupt 
what we're doing is we're constantly reading the button to see whether or not it's being pressed. Again, I have to wait for this thing to do its self-checking routines. Now, my guess is we'll be nowhere near uh, the value we had before. And look at that, 4.2 milliamps. Uh, same order as that uh, crappy uh, um, buck converter in the um, battery holder. So, uh, for comparison's sake, uh, we have 4 milliamps uh, scanning the switch versus 200 nanoamps waiting for the switch to tell us when it's ready. Uh, and by my uh, mental arithmetic, uh, it's using 20,000 times more power when it's scanning the switch than when it's waiting for the switch uh, to generate an, inter an interrupt using the microcontroller. Well, I hope you found that interesting, and maybe you, you, you're probably struggling to see the practical sides of this, but if it, if it gets you thinking about how well you can uh, utilise the energy in a battery by careful selection of components, careful programming, then uh, my work is done. If you found it useful or found it interesting, please give me a thumbs up. All the best. Cheers. Thank you.